Emil Krepelin, Wikipedia Audio Emil Krepelin, 15 February 1856 October 7, 1926 was a German psychiatrist. H. J. Eisenk S. Encyclopedia of Psychology identifies him as the founder of modern scientific psychiatry, psychopharmacology, and psychiatric genetics. Krepelin believed the chief origin of psychiatric disease to be biological and genetic malfunction. His theories dominated psychiatry at the start of the 20th century and, despite the later psychodynamic influence of Sigmund Freud and his disciples, enjoyed a revival at century's end. While he proclaimed his own high clinical standards of gathering information by means of expert analysis of individual cases, he also drew on reported observations of officials not trained in psychiatry. His textbooks do not contain detailed case histories of individuals but mosaic-like compilations of typical statements and behaviors from patients with a specific diagnosis. He has been described as a scientific manager and a political operator, who developed a large-scale, clinically-oriented, epidemiological research program. Krepelin, whose father, Carl Wilhelm, was a former opera singer, music teacher and later successful storyteller, was born in 1856 in New Strelitz, in the Duchy of mecklenburg strelitz in Germany. He was first introduced to biology by his brother Carl, ten years older and, later, the director of the Zoological Museum of Hamburg. Family and Early Life Krepelin began his medical studies in 1874 at the University of Leipzig and completed them at the University of Würzburg. At Leipzig, he studied neuropathology under Paul Fletchzig and experimental psychology with Wilhelm Wundt. Krepelin would be a disciple of Wundt and had a lifelong interest in experimental psychology based on his theories. While there, Krepelin wrote a prize-winning essay, The Influence of Acute Illness in the Causation of Mental Disorders. At Würzburg he completed his rigorosum in March 1878, his stats examen in July 1878, and his approbation on August 9, 1878. From August 1878 to 1882, he worked with Bernhard von Gutten at the University of Munich. Returning to the University of Leipzig in February 1882, he worked in Wilhelm Heinrich Erb's neurology clinic and in Wundt's psychopharmacology laboratory. He completed his habilitation thesis at Leipzig, it was entitled The Place of Psychology in Psychiatry. On December 3, 1883 he completed his Umhabilitierung at Munich. Krepelin's major work, Compendium der Psychiatry, Zum Gebrauch für Studierend und Ärzte, was first published in 1883 and was expanded in subsequent multi-volume editions to Ein Lehrbuch der Psychiatry. In it, he argued that psychiatry was a branch of medical science and should be investigated by observation and experimentation like the other natural sciences. He called for research into the physical causes of mental illness, and started to establish the foundations of the modern classification system for mental disorders. Krepelin proposed that by studying case histories and identifying specific disorders, the progression of mental illness could be predicted, after taking into account individual differences in personality and patient age at the onset of disease manic depression, and, dementia precox. In 1884 he became senior physician in the Prussian provincial town of Lubus, Silesia province, and the following year he was appointed director of the Treatment and Nursing Institute in Dresden. On July 1, 1886, at the age of 30, 
Kreppelin was named Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Dorpat in what is today Estonia. Four years later, on December 5, 1890, he became department head at the University of Heidelberg, where he remained until 1904. While at Dorpat he became the director of the 80-bed university clinic. There he began to study and record many clinical histories in detail and was led to consider the importance of the course of the illness with regard to the classification of mental disorders. In 1903 Kreppelin moved to Munich to become professor of clinical psychiatry at the University of Munich. He was elected a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1908. In 1912 at the request of the German Society of Psychiatry, he began plans to establish a center for research. Following a large donation from the Jewish-German-American banker James Loeb, who had at one time been a patient, and promises of support from patrons of science, the German Institute for Psychiatric Research was founded in 1917 in Munich. Initially housed in existing hospital buildings, it was maintained by further donations from Loeb and his relatives. In 1924 it came under the auspices of the Kaiser Wilhelm Society for the Advancement of Science. The German-American Rockefeller Family's Rockefeller Foundation made a large donation enabling the development of a new dedicated building for the Institute, along Kreppelin's guidelines, which was officially opened in 1928. Kreppelin spoke out against the barbarous treatment that was prevalent in the psychiatric asylums of the time, and crusaded against alcohol, capital punishment and the imprisonment rather than treatment of the insane. He rejected psychoanalytical theories that posited innate or early sexuality as the cause of mental illness, and he rejected philosophical speculation as unscientific. He focused on collecting clinical data and was particularly interested in neuropathology. Engstrom. Slash Kreppelin Biography. PDF, Uni Leipzig. Slash Sci. Slash Eng. Slash Creepy. HTML, Burkhart Bruckner, Julian Swartz, Biography of Emil Wilhelm George Magnus Kreppelin in Biographical Archive of Psychiatry. In the later period of his career, as a convinced champion of social Darwinism, he actively promoted a policy and research agenda in racial hygiene and eugenics. Kreppelin retired from teaching at the age of 66, spending his remaining years establishing the institute. The ninth and final edition of his textbook was published in 1927, shortly after his death. It comprised four volumes and was ten times larger than the first edition of 1883. On Uprootedness, Emil Kreppelin's Clinical Self-Assessment, Psychiatric Observations on Contemporary Issues, on the Question of Degeneration, the Directions of Psychiatric Research. Education and Career In the last years of his life, Kreppelin was preoccupied with Buddhist teachings and was planning to visit Buddhist shrines at the time of his death, according to his daughter, Antony Schmidt Kreppelin. Kreppelin announced that he had found a new way of looking at mental illness, referring to the traditional view as symptomatic and to his view as clinical. This turned out to be his paradigm-setting synthesis of the hundreds of mental disorders classified by the 19th century, grouping diseases together based on classification of syndrome common patterns of symptoms over time rather than by simple similarity of major symptoms in the manner of his predecessors. Kreppelin described his work in the fifth edition of his textbook as a decisive step from a symptomatic to a clinical view of insanity. The importance of external clinical signs has, been subordinated to consideration of the conditions of origin, the course and the terminus which result from individual disorders. <laughs>
Thus, all purely symptomatic categories have disappeared from the nosologi. Crepeline is specifically credited with the classification of what was previously considered to be a unitary concept of psychosis, into two distinct forms. Drawing on his long-term research, and using the criteria of course, outcome, and prognosis, he developed the concept of dementia precox, which he defined as the subacute development of a peculiar simple condition of mental weakness occurring at a youthful age. When he first introduced this concept as a diagnostic entity in the fourth German edition of his Lehrbuch der Psychiatrie in 1893, it was placed among the degenerative disorders alongside, but separate from, catatonia and dementia paranoids. At that time, the concept corresponded by and large with Ewald Hecker s Hebephrenia. In the sixth edition of the Lehrbuch in 1899 all three of these clinical types are treated as different expressions of one disease, dementia precox. One of the cardinal principles of his method was the recognition that any given symptom may appear in virtually any one of these disorders, e.g., there is almost no single symptom occurring in dementia precox which cannot sometimes be found in manic depression. What distinguishes each disease symptomatically is not any particular symptom or symptoms, but a specific pattern of symptoms. In the absence of a direct physiological or genetic test or marker for each disease, it is only possible to distinguish them by their specific pattern of symptoms. Thus, Crepeline's system is a method for pattern recognition, not grouping by common symptoms. Crepeline also demonstrated specific patterns in the genetics of these disorders and specific and characteristic patterns in their course and outcome. Generally speaking, there tend to be more schizophrenics among the relatives of schizophrenic patients than in the general population, while manic depression is more frequent in the relatives of manic depressives. Though, of course, this does not demonstrate genetic linkage, as this might be a socio-environmental factor as well. He also reported a pattern to the course and outcome of these conditions. Crepeline believed that schizophrenia had a deteriorating course in which mental function continuously declines, while manic depressive patients experienced a course of illness which was intermittent, where patients were relatively symptom free during the intervals which separate acute episodes. This led Crepeline to name what we now know as schizophrenia, dementia precox. It later became clear that dementia precox did not necessarily lead to mental decline and was thus renamed schizophrenia by Eugen Bleuler to correct Crepeline's misnomer. Theories and Classification Schemes Psychosis and Mood In addition, as Crepeline accepted in 1920, it is becoming increasingly obvious that we cannot satisfactorily distinguish these two diseases, however, he maintained that on the one hand we find those patients with irreversible dementia and severe cortical lesions. On the other are those patients whose personality remains intact. Nevertheless, overlap between the diagnoses and neurological abnormalities have continued and in fact a diagnostic category of schizoaffective disorder would be brought in to cover the intermediate cases. Psychopathic Personalities Alzheimer's Disease Eugenics Influence Dreams Crepeline devoted very few pages to his speculations about the etiology of his two major insanities, dementia precox and manic depressive insanity. However, from 1896 to his death in 1926 he held to the speculation that these insanities would one day probably be found to be caused by a gradual systemic or whole-body disease process, probably metabolic 
which affected many of the organs and nerves in the body but affected the brain in a final, decisive cascade. In the 1st through 6th edition of Kreppelin's influential psychiatry textbook, there was a section on moral insanity, which meant then a disorder of the emotions or moral sense without apparent delusions or hallucinations, and which Kreppelin defined as lack or weakness of those sentiments which counter the ruthless satisfaction of egotism. He attributed this mainly to degeneration. This has been described as a psychiatric redefinition of César Lombroso's theories of the born criminal, conceptualized as a moral defect, though Kreppelin stressed it was not yet possible to recognize them by physical characteristics. In fact from 1904 Kreppelin changed the section heading to the born criminal, moving it from under congenital feeble-mindedness to a new chapter on psychopathic personalities. They were treated under a theory of degeneration. Four types were distinguished, born criminals, pathological liars, querulous persons, and treatmention. The concept of psychopathic inferiorities had been recently popularized in Germany by Julius Ludwig August Cook, who proposed congenital and acquired types. Kreppelin had no evidence or explanation suggesting a congenital cause and his assumption therefore appears to have been simple biologism. Others, such as Gustav Schaffenberg, argued for a varying combination of causes. Kreppelin's assumption of a moral defect rather than a positive drive towards crime has also been questioned, as it implies that the moral sense is somehow inborn and unvarying, yet it was known to vary by time and place and Kreppelin never considered that the moral sense might just be different. Kurt Schneider criticized Kreppelin's nosologi for appearing to be a list of behaviors that he considered undesirable, rather than medical conditions, though Schneider's alternative version has also been criticized on the same basis. Nevertheless, Many essentials of these diagnostic systems were introduced into the diagnostic systems, and remarkable similarities remain in the DSM-4 and ICD-10. The issues would today mainly be considered under the category of personality disorders, or in terms of Kreppelin's focus on psychopathy. Bibliography Kreppelin had referred to psychopathic conditions in his 1896 edition, including compulsive insanity, impulsive insanity, homosexuality, and mood disturbances. From 1904, however, he instead termed those original disease conditions, and introduced the new alternative category of psychopathic personalities. In the 8th edition from 1909 that category would include, in addition to a separate dissocial type, the excitable, the unstable, the treatmention driven persons, eccentrics, the liars, and swindlers, and the quarrelsome. It has been described as remarkable that Kreppelin now considered mood disturbances to be not part of the same category, but only attenuated phases of manic depressive illness, this corresponds to current classification schemes. Kreppelin postulated that there is a specific brain or other biological pathology underlying each of the major psychiatric disorders. As a colleague of Louise Alzheimer, he was a CO discoverer of Alzheimer's disease, and his laboratory discovered its pathological basis. Kreppelin was confident that it would someday be possible to identify the pathological basis of each of the major psychiatric disorders. Upon moving to become professor of clinical psychiatry at the University of Munich in 1903, Kreppelin increasingly wrote on social policy issues. He was a strong and influential proponent of eugenics and racial hygiene. His publications included a focus on alcoholism, crime, degeneration, and hysteria.
Krepelin was convinced that such institutions as the education system and the welfare state, because of their trend to break the processes of natural selection, undermined the Germans' biological struggle for survival. He was concerned to preserve and enhance the German people, the folk, in the sense of nation or race. He appears to have held Lamarckian concepts of evolution, such that cultural deterioration could be inherited. He was a strong ally and promoter of the work of fellow psychiatrist Ernst Rudin to clarify the mechanisms of genetic inheritance as to make a so-called empirical genetic prognosis. Martin Brun has pointed out that Krepelin and Rudin also appear to have been ardent advocates of a self-domestication theory, a version of social Darwinism which held that modern culture was not allowing people to be weeded out, resulting in more mental disorder and deterioration of the gene pool. Krepelin saw a number of symptoms of this, such as weakening of viability and resistance, decreasing fertility, proletarianization, and moral damage due to penning up people. He also wrote that the number of idiots, epileptics, psychopaths, criminals, prostitutes, and tramps who descend from alcoholic and syphilitic parents, and who transfer their inferiority to their offspring, is incalculable. He felt that the well-known example of the Jews, with their strong disposition towards nervous and mental disorders, teaches us that their extraordinarily advanced domestication may eventually imprint clear marks on the race. Brun states that Krepelin's nosological system was, to a great deal, built on the degeneration paradigm. Krepelin's great contribution in classifying schizophrenia and manic depression remains relatively unknown to the general public, and his work, which had neither the literary quality nor paradigmatic power of Freud's, is little read outside scholarly circles. Krepelin's contributions were also to a large extent marginalized throughout a good part of the 20th century during the success of Freudian ideological theories. However, his views now dominate many quarters of psychiatric research and academic psychiatry. His fundamental theories on the diagnosis of psychiatric disorders form the basis of the major diagnostic systems in use today, especially the American Psychiatric Association SDSM4 and the World Health Organization SICD system based on the research diagnostic criteria and earlier Fainer criteria developed by espoused Neocrepelinians, though Robert Spitzer and others in the DSM committees were keen not to include assumptions about causation as Krepelin had. Krepelin has been described as a scientific manager and political operator, who developed a large-scale, clinically-oriented, epidemiological research program. In this role he took in clinical information from a wide range of sources and networks. Despite proclaiming high clinical standards for himself to gather information by means of expert analysis of individual cases, he would also draw on the reported observations of officials not trained in psychiatry. The various editions of his textbooks do not contain detailed case histories of individuals, however but mosaic-like compilations of typical statements and behaviors from patients with a specific diagnosis. In broader terms, he has been described as a bourgeois or reactionary citizen. Krepelin wrote in an Apuendi Klar style that made his books useful tools for physicians. Abridged and clumsy English translations of the 6th and 7th editions of his textbook in 1902 and 1907 by Alan Ross Diefendorf, an assistant physician at the Connecticut Hospital for the Insane at Middletown, inadequately conveyed the literary quality of his writings that made them so valuable to practitioners. In the Heidelberg and early Munich years he edited Psychologisk Arbeiten, a journal on experimental psychology.
One of his own famous contributions to this journal also appeared in the form of a monograph entitled Übersprachstörung in im Traum. Kreppelin, on the basis on the dream psychosis analogy, studied for more than 20 years language disorder in dreams in order to study indirectly schizophagia. The dreams Kreppelin collected are mainly his own. They lack extensive comment by the dreamer. In order to study them the full range of biographical knowledge available today on Kreppelin is necessary. For biographies of Kreppelin see Notes For English translations of Kreppelin's work see